we're so excited to have Vince Arecchio and Teresa Mueller, commercial uh, real estate broker, on our podcast. And uh, we can't wait to hear what they have to say. Let's go. This is Steve Kemp with the People Not Titles podcast, and I'm pleased today to have two uh, fantastic industry professionals. We have Vince Arricchio, who is an attorney, a real estate attorney, and uh, expert on many uh, things, uh, law speaking. And then we have Teresa Mueller, who is with Trillium uh, Real Estate, and she is the owner, the broker owner. So welcome, guys. Glad to Thank have you. Thank you. Thanks for, Thank having, you for us. having us. So uh, guys, really the premise of the podcast is um, uh, giving voice to people that have just risen to success in the real estate world. Oh, we're famous now. Yes. You're too kind. You're too kind. Don't let right. my friends and family see this. <laughs> right, right, right. And, um, you know, so uh, I know that you guys are have a radio show and uh, there's a lot of uh, people that are interested in what you have to say. And so we're happy to uh, expose uh, you guys even further to our audience. Thanks. Um, so what I'd like to do is maybe just talk a little bit about how you guys got started in doing what you're doing. Why don't we start with Teresa? Of course, ladies, sure. ladies first. Ladies, ladies first. first. So um, just a little quick background. Mm -hmm. uh, in college, I my undergrad degree is in geology. And then I realized I needed to get a job. So I went into engineering for my master's. And then when I, all the offers that came in, nothing was in Chicago other than Anderson Consulting, now Accenture. So I took a, a job with Anderson Consulting. And um, after a few years, I was just kind of reevaluating, does it make sense? And I decided to go into real estate. I went with a, a lar larger brokerage. And uh, did, you, did you start in commercial real estate? I started on the residential okay. side. And so, but what was happening is I would have, um, well, I, start, I had investment properties, so people would contact me about investment properties. And then on top of it, um, people who were leaving, ex now then Accenture, uh, they would say, oh, I'm opening up my business. I need retail or office space. Now it's all warehouse, right? Yeah. So I kind of wound up doing a little of everything. So if you've got a skyscraper, I haven't done that. So if you've got to leave there, I'd, I'd, <laughs> okay. I'd, I'd take that one in. But that's kind of how I... I segued into commercial and I thought it made more sense for me to go out on my own because usually most brokerages are either residential or commercial and I wound up servicing both and uh, we could talk about later but I also do the international side so Ooh. but um, yeah it's kind of it was, now, that was a segue. Would you agree that you probably service both because of the caliber of clients you're getting if you're getting these higher end residential areas, Naperville yeah, or so otherwise, they're a business, then, then they, they also they also contact me. And you know, the thing is, is with real estate, there's a lot of turnover. People can't go into real estate, not on the law side, but when you're selling side, everyone thinks, oh, I'm gonna make a ton of money, you know, selling real estate, but you actually have to work, you know, mm -hmm. you have to have business plans, you have to spend money. Yeah. And so the attrition rate is very high. So when you're selling, if you're selling a million dollar home or you know you have a business and million dollar home, you wanna know that it's someone that is intelligent, you could trust, uh, can understand the transaction. And I've kind of done a little of everything. So when people say, what's your niche? I go, what's that word? I don't even know what that means, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're gonna get into what were the keys to when you began, because mm -hmm. I think that, that a lot, uh, some people who are beginning in real estate uh, you know, you're an expert, right? But there was a time where you weren't an expert, so I want to hear. Wait, about there that. was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I never right. thought that. Until you make it right, or whatever. Yeah, exactly. I get you that. were born. <laughs> yeah, I was born expert. Exactly. So, Vince, what about you? How did you begin in uh, just uh, in law, and then how did you uh, transverse over to real estate law? Sure. I'll start with uh, only what's half a joke is my father said there's four ways you're going to college, son. <laughs> I'm gonna help you pay for it and you're gonna be a doctor. I'm gonna help you pay for it, you're gonna be an accountant. I'm gonna help you pay for it, you're gonna be a lawyer, or you're gonna pay for it. Ooh. So <laughs> the one was off the table. <laughs> so it was in the 90s, uh, or I applied in the 80s, and that was like the old thinking, you know, doctor, lawyer, accountant. Yep. Um, well, I'm probably maybe. What about the math portion? Uh, I love math, but I was, but I, I thought being an accountant was boring. No offense to accountants, that was me. I, mean, I think I'm mistaken with finance being what it is nowadays. Um, also, I couldn't stand the sight of blood, so yeah. I wouldn't have been the best battlefield medic, you know. Okay. Uh, so I chose law. Um, but also, as my dad often joked, I might be the worst lawyer ever because I chose it not for the money, but to help people. Okay. And I know that sounds noble now. I know that yes. sounds catchy or very twenty first century. But I really just wanted to help people and that's why I 
probably could have been either like a school teacher or a pastor, which were my two first, <laughs> but they weren't on my dad's list for okay, me to go to yeah, college. yeah, which qualify it. <laughs> so, uh, no, I uh, decided after college or in college I wanted to be an attorney, but to help people. So I broke into litigation with a, a personal injury firm and then switched sides, went medical malpractice, and you want to know what? Um, the litigation was great. I was told that I was good at it, but but it wasn't fulfilling. It was more like just fight, 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 competition, which I don't mind competition, Did but you it wasn't... Did you see the blood in the court? Like, it was, was a, a bloodbath. Blood <laughs> it was a bloodbath. Now, I get that in my commercial <laughs> deals. Oh, 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 I'm fond of saying the residential deals are like a hot tub experience. The commercial deals are knife fights. Uh, wow. Uh, yeah. I'll explain why later. <laughs> yeah, that will fit on a license plate. Uh -huh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then when I switched to transactional work uh, 20 years ago, uh, in the year 2000, I really did enjoy the common goal. Of course, you have to def defend your client's interests. Of course, you negotiate strong. But actually, no. You know, you're trying to get to a point. You're trying to close a deal. And it's even more... Um, com there's more camaraderie even with your opponents, even with your opposing counsel. So I enjoy helping people and I enjoyed the intellectual stimulation, but I also enjoyed working together with counsel across the table. Well, and so the fact that you wanted to be a teacher, there's a lot of education that goes into this with buyers and sellers, right? Where you're teaching them the, some of the basics that they wouldn't consider, but they do it every seven years and things have changed and all that. Well, so. thank you. Thank you so much for saying that. Yeah. Yes, because my wife is fond of saying, uh, I, uh, stop spending so much time on the phone with your buyers. Now, now, yeah. now that I've been home, yeah. okay, <laughs> during yeah. COVID, yeah. she hears all the conversations and actually I love she working. She could give your speech probably. She right? could, she yeah. could. I love working with first time buyers, but there's, it's not a secret, it's just mm -hmm. a reality of the marketplace. Yeah. Um, real estate attorneys make more money when they have an opportunity to work with sellers than buyers. Yeah. So you could say with flat fee services, that the more time you spend with buyers, it's the law of diminishing returns, right? Well, actually, I enjoy working with brand new couples, that college person buying for the first time, uh, that married couple buying their first house. First time buyers really get me charged mm -hmm. up. It's kind of like uh, same thing on the sales side, right? You you make more money, obviously, if you're listing. Yeah. And it, it, they say list or die. But the more fun are the first time or something that's a little bit more different. You know, I have a friend who's an, air, an airline attendant and she said the most fun time she has is when people are going on vacation. All the ones that were this business, are like, oh, you know. But when they're going to the Caribbean, she's like, those are always fun flights to be on, totally. you know. And you brought it up from the teaching setting, which is why, yes, fun, yes, awesome, yes, a charge. But actually, I get to, you know, work with first-time buyers. It is a teachable moment. And then they're not first-timers. And then all goes well. Yeah. Uh, I honestly believe, especially with social media and tracking, that I get repeat business, today's buyer is tomorrow's seller, and then I'm with them again. And totally. you said seven years later, whatever it is, it is there's nothing more, same, it's got, same's gotta be for you. Yeah. There's nothing more exciting than getting a call, hey, hey this, remember right me, I'm yeah. ready to sell. And you're That's like, awesome. oh, somebody's coming <clears throat> back. That's awesome. Yeah, and, uh, and it takes a lot of patience, and it takes actually a lot of caring to be able to go through the, a little bit of the same story every time, like you're saying it for the first time. And there's all, a little bit of that in every sales presentation where you're like, okay, I need to give this, but I did, you know, Sinatra saying, you know, uh, my way three times a day, and I'll be saying it to that audience for one time, and that's how he treated them. So, yes, yes. Um, well, and speaking of that seven-year time frame, when this uh, pandemic starts, that he knows that I was in Nicaragua. I was supposed to go to wow. France for this international conference. Tell him how long you were in Nicaragua. Yeah, well, Illinois Realtors are going to pay for me to go to MIPM. Hopefully, we're going to bring business back to Chicago. Yeah. Well, about a week before the conference, they postponed it and since canceled, and I said, I'm going somewhere like I planned, you know, someone to take care of my business while I'm away. Uh, I'll look on a map. Oh, uh, Nicaragua has one case. I think I'll go to Nicaragua. So I had some friends in Nicaragua. To develop hung out. Friends yeah. in Nicaragua. We all have friends. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a side gig. It's so, so legit. So I did go see some real estate developments, and I know develop, a developer that goes through all the different um, Latin American countries, and then I know a realtor couple down there. So they showed me around. I, I had a great time. Also saw the real estate developments. 
Um, but then I was stuck there a little extra time because, you know, the lockdown started here. And I was like, So this well, was in I'm, March you were there. Yeah. And, you and I go, I go, so you know. So she won't tell you, but there was hashtag free Teresa. Wow. <laughs> wow. And so I thought I would just, I'm like, I'm just going to stay down here because I don't want to quarantine. And, uh, you know, I was very naive at the time. Yeah. And eventually the government's like, okay, you need to come back Get now or else. There was and, the deadline and yes, you met it. And I did literally the airport closed the next day after wow. I came back. And so, um, I get back and obviously I came back to a whole new world. I mean, I didn't see that whole lockdown process, but right away we knew that we had to pivot. Right. Yeah. So to, I have been selling commercial real estate, but I just started going out there, the zoom meetings, the, the net, the networking via online, however it happened. And what was happening is, some of my, my the office space, some of those um, uh, areas of commercial real estate that I thought I was going to be doing a deal wasn't going to happen because people were not going to expand. They were not going to open up a business. You know, everything was kind of put and on your, hold. Your, your pipeline and became that's right. a garden hose. Yeah. You know, <laughs> right. So I. You told me uh, with the, you had a, um, a number of restauranteers. Yes. And, yes. Uh, yes. I mean, think about People are looking to second. expand and have right. great dreams and hopes and plans. Right. And next thing you know, it's like, wait a second, do I want to do any of exactly. this? Exactly. Everyone, everyone was on pause. So I thought, okay, well, where's my business coming from? And I was really fortunate because I had a lot of clients from years ago, you know, seven, 10, how many of years ago that they had bought residential with me and they said, hey, I'm ready to list. The market's really hot right now. I mean, it well, was not cool. in March, yeah. but it started happening in April and May and it's been gangbusters, the residential side. Hmm. The commercial side, yes, office is pretty rough. Retail, I do have actually some retail clients. Right. So that's, that's, a, that's a that's a more a different variety. Um, the multifamily is still doing strong and the warehouse has gone gangbusters wow. as well. Just that's because, you know, you think about what happened with Amazon and, you know, all these online vendors, they can expand right now, yes, right? absolutely. Yeah, that's excellent. Sure. So Teresa, I want to go back to when you started in real estate. You said you started with a big firm. How'd you separate yourself? Everyone starts, you know, everyone gets their license. How'd you separate yourself from the pack? What are some of the keys that you see now? You know? <laughs> Call the MLS, yeah. I'm switching. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I had to find, first of all, a breaking point that it made sense that, you know, I, I'm not having any transactions with the old company, new company. So it was literally like, you know, pack my bags in the middle of the night and walk out yep. the office, right? Yep. So that I had that right timing. Did you start and, real estate full time? Um, well, Sort of, um, you know, I had been investing okay. beforehand okay. and then I kind of was dipping my toes. I did my real estate education while I was still um, working and then I started interviewing with offices. But then, yes, I pretty much transitioned from the corporate world into corporate real estate because I went with one of the larger brokerages. Mm -hmm. But to go independent, um, I didn't have a great business plan. I wouldn't recommend it. But at the time, I was selling like crazy. Literally, my name was when I left, walked out the doors of the larger brokerage, was TeresaMuller.com. Because wow. I was like, I don't have time to brand, I don't have time to do anything. You know, I'm just selling. It wasn't until we hit the recession that I thought, maybe I should have a plan. Maybe I should, you know, it's not Is this 08 ish or when you said post, recession? Post 2006. Oh, okay. yeah. Up until yeah, 2006. Yeah, yeah. Everything we were game busters, oh, yeah, right. right? It didn't matter. Yeah. You know, you could throw a dart on the wall and make money in the market. Yep, you know, yep, real estate yep, didn't matter. Yep, yep. Um, a monkey could do it, right? Mm -hmm. But um, once the recession hit, then I had to retool, and that's also when I before that I started doing the CCIM course, mm -hmm. which that's a commercial. That's kind of the PhD in the commercial world for yes, realtors. Yes. And so I started doing that, but again, that put put on pause. I really had to do some reflection. I did some branding. And then I was pretty much helping people however they need it during that recession, mm -hmm. right? Like, okay, it's a foreclosure. Is it short sale? Is it, you know, okay, buying up speculative commercial space? Pretty much whatever was out there, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna be ready to pivot. And that's what I had to do again this time, right? Mm -hmm. Pivot, like, okay, the commercial's not working that great at the moment, but I could switch to residential for the time being. But commercial's coming back. So, I'll, you know, when we get to it, I'll talk about some of the deals I'm doing. Yeah, okay, that's great. Uh, how about you, uh, Vince? When you uh, so, how did you you know, how did you separate yourself from the rest? There's a lot of people in your profession. How do why do people pick you? You know, sure. And you know, I don't want to sound pessimistic in I any think way. It's we're radio stars. Well, I, <laughs> well, I I don't know that I'm ever done learning. Mm -hmm. Like I'm always looking for Absolutely. what 
yeah. stands out and either I'm too much of a pessimist or I don't think it's humility. Uh, it's like I'm not ever sure anything's ever working, mm -hmm. but um, clearly uh, video web on my website. Uh, I get a lot of calls because people say, oh, they looked at the videos. I probably shouldn't be telling my competitors this, uh, but video content on well, the Well, what are they really do it? Well, you, you know, sure. there's a time All element, right. getting it done. Sure. So you're so. saying that the internet is going to be a thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> well a video, from what I understand from my marketing contacts mm -hmm. and from my fellow attorneys and even real estate agents mm -hmm. who give me feedback, not many lawyers have video. Okay. It may be commonplace in the title world. It may be commonplace It is for residential, term. but not on the commercial side. Yes. And so same thing, when I came back from Nicaragua, I had not been doing virtual tours of my office space or retail. I mean, that was the first thing. I went right to the office space and I did a virtual tour and a couple leads came in saying, I saw your virtual tour yeah. on there, out, you know, out on the web. So, the I mean, <laughs> you, you, you um, I don't want to be hyper technical, but you asked me, like, what separates you from the yeah. pack? I mean, that's what I think over the last three years might be a difference maker. Prior to that, it's very boring. It's it maybe even non persuasive, but it's, you know, caring and spending time with your clients and developing the broadest network possible. Yeah, a, another thing. How do you develop your broad network? Well, it took me years to realize the obvious, which is. All the fancy stuff doesn't matter. It's your real estate agent context. As an attorney, mm -hmm. we get our uh, opportunities to meet clients through the pipeline of the real estate agents. So all you do is try, try, try to spend time with your real estate agents. You don't have care a about your real billboard on no, 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 nothing. <laughs> I mean, you, you never know. I mean, yeah. I haven't tried that yet. Yeah, yeah. But um, to broaden the network, I, it, it's it's boring. It's old fashioned. It's personal relationships with your real estate agents as follows. Be friends with them and mean it, mm -hmm. and also treat their clients like gold. It doesn't matter if you're a friendly person if they don't get good feedback from their cli their clients as well. So it's kind of like boring in the internet age to say, you know, what works, because it's just back to personal relationships. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm a little frustrated that that's the case because I don't know if I'm missing something or if it's just the way it is. Well, I think in every business that there, there's this, uh, there's you know, 50 or 60 percent of it that is the, the boring grind of it. That if you don't do well, you can do everything else well. You can have the greatest videos, but if they don't like the taste of the soup, they're not coming back for another bowl. Yeah. And the same good thing. thing I make good chicken soup. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the same thing. Is those, you know, the boring things are the hardest things to do. To stay intentional about them. To stay good at it. To stay engaged in it, so uh, you yeah. know, congratulations. Well, and that's the things. business plan. Mm -hmm. Every real estate attor agent, attorney, they should have every year a business plan. Mm -hmm. But one thing that you have to keep in mind, they'll say, oh, okay, what are your your goals? COVID. <laughs> right, yeah. right. No one can answer that one. <laughs> and, you know, it's there you also no have to yet. adjust, yeah. right? You can totally. put, put together plans and say, wait a second, it's not working, right? No one predicted that COVID was going to happen. And I'm telling you, people came out gangbusters in January. Yeah. Everyone was calling me every hot 10 seconds, you know, doing their networking, bringing out coffee. Go, listen, I got coffee coming my ears. If you want me, <laughs> you got better take me to Linea because there's too many people wanting network right now. Yeah. And that came into yeah. a screeching halt in March, right? Yeah. So it was completely readjusting. You're not taking people out to coffee or in my case, Linea, because those are not options, right? Yeah. And just... So having that in your mind, here are the actions I need to do to get where I want to be, but it might have to change, mm. right? So what? Uh, so in terms of the relationships, how did you, how did you shift and pivot? How do you, how do you stay connected with people now? Me? Yeah, or you. Teresa? Or, or let's go, Teresa. Okay. First. How do I stay connected? Well, it was a lot of zooms. I'm kind of zoomed out yeah. at the moment. Yeah. Um, I any networking opportunity, I do love to go. Yeah. Um. But I would say it's an online presence mm -hmm. at the moment, mm -hmm. right? Um, I am not a very good consumer of Facebook and Instagram. I post stuff out there, yeah. but I'm not a very good consumer. But I do try to kind of look out there, look at some what some of my clients are doing. Um, but it's really also touching base. What's really, really important at the moment is touching base with your prior clients okay. and say, what do you need right now? Especially, right? Like yeah. what what is something that I can help you with? which may not be money producing at the moment, but if you can be of service, you know, to those clients That's great. in some way. I, I love it. And how, how about you, Vince? Yeah, pro a little bit of a retread, right? A repeat. Uh, prior to COVID, it was just, 
you know, networking events or uh, uh, go out for lunch with go out team, for lunch, coffee, yeah. Uh, yeah. dinners. Mm -hmm. But since COVID, you know, uh, it's a little. Or even see them at closings, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. Now it's you don't, you don't yeah, see your right. agents at closings. Exactly. So since, uh, so uh, my, my business came to a screeching halt uh, from, I, I'd say I had a closing, I think Monday was a March 18th. Uh, mm -hmm. I, was at a, I was at the Blackhawks game with my son on a Wednesday. Mm -hmm. On the drive home, the NHL shut down. So it was a Wednesday in March, I think the 13th or something. And then the following Monday, I had they a deal. Uh, they won against the San Jose Sharks. <laughs> and everyone was laughing at the United right. Center because we're all looking at each other because San Jose had shut down its stadium. Uh, mm -hmm. So we were at a United Center game with a team. Wow, so that was the did, last hockey it, game. It was the last hockey game in the NHL wow. before the restart. Wow. On the way home, Pretty my amazing. son and I were listening to ESPN Radio, and they're like, the NHL's done. And we were like, we were at the last game. The reason why that's burning my memory is the following Monday, I had a bye where I was sitting with my uh, client, a gentleman who's like, they just shut down my building for COVID. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, in downtown Chicago. Why do I bring that up? Because from whether it's March 18th or not, whatever that Monday was after that hockey game, I had zero deals until the end of May. Mm -hmm. My wife was looking at me while I'm working from <laughs> like, home. Now, WTF. I was working on our market. <laughs> we, we were in touch with working on my marketing, Blitz and LinkedIn, Blitz Keep and grinding. Facebook. Yeah. Like all that energy went into marketing, which once right. I got busy again, mm -hmm. I've kind of sloughed off, got to be careful. <laughs> yeah. right. um, but it was dead, Steve, mm -hmm. until the end of May. Mm -hmm. Then COVID starts up again. And to answer your question, it's even more boring than my other answer, which is <laughs> the real estate agents just don't want you to drop a ball. Yeah. The, from from May until now, it's hit every closing date, stay in touch with my clients. I'll see you next year, Vince. Mm -hmm. I haven't, I see Teresa today and at our radio show, I don't see any other agents. Wow. And it's just- God, I feel it's so just, privileged. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we have fun, yeah. but it's just, a lot of just just be responsive to their clients and you could say well that's always the answer I, well there's nothing else to do right now steve mm -hmm. i don't have mm -hmm. i don't have that other answer yeah so there was a time though well you know whether april or may where we were labeled a essential business right and so then people had to make a decision am i going to get out there you know you got families at home and all so how'd you process that what'd you what'd you think about that like hey i got to get out there right that's if I, i'm in this profession i have to be careful but i have to get moving is that what you I, I really didn't spend much time. I just went into go mode. Good for you. So I really was not that's thinking. Great. And I think that's part of a personality, right? Absolutely. And everyone who I was networking with, they were all in agreement. Like, this is how you are going to come out ahead later on, right? And I actually feel somewhat um, thankful in a way that I think that there's some good, some people going to be leaving my profession. You know, we, I think we had mentioned well, it's something. It's like that, right? It's like cycles. Right. It's, it's, yeah. it's, uh, let, let's talk about like obstacles, right? Mm -hmm. Um, one of the obstacles in commercial is that traditionally people hold everything close to the vest and it's not always in the best interest of the clients, right? That they're not doing the market. They say, oh, I'll just put a sign out front. They're not putting it online. You know, they want both sides of the deal. And one thing that myself and some other realtors have been working um, towards, uh, you know, because I'm part of a few different associations, is to have one, more transparency, mm -hmm. you know, and two, cooperation, right? So instead of just putting a sign, make certain that this listing is all over the internet. So this uh, pandemic is going to accelerate those trends that should have been happening anyway in commercial yes, real estate. Yes. So you're going to see more presence on the internet, more pictures, more to virtual tours, more engagement, and hopefully more in uh, cooperation with other agents. Mm -hmm. The residential side, they've been cooperating for years. Commercial, it's it's a slowing, um, pro it's a slow process, but it's happening. So yeah. I'm part of NICAR, which is the Northern Illinois Commercial Association Realtors, and they're all on board. Like, let's cooperate because this is in the best interest of our client. That's great. That's so that's a that's a benefit of that's kind of coming out of this. Right. It's, it's, this is going to be a better uh, opportunity for everyone who wants. Right. To it's not going to work to just throw a sign out front. Yeah, yeah. I that's mean, great. it's helpful, but it's yeah. not the only solution. So what did you think about uh, Vince at that time where it's like, okay, listen, I'm going to get out there. I'm going to be a first responder. I mean, literally, uh, you know, yeah. in some ways, right? First, so thankful that Illinois did, because it applied to me, yeah. did choose to consider uh, title companies and the closing process an essential service. So Pretty much a, anything real estate. So as a real estate attorney, I was like, well, that's great. And then once the agents were able to start showing again, 
frankly, just put on your masks. I think we could show right away, right? Uh, no, was... no, there were, you guys were a lot. Well, you well were, I was in Nicaragua. What did I know? This is, <laughs> this is a true timeline. While you were in Nicaragua, weeks, no showing. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, then when they, and people were trying to do virtual, but many were not making offers off virtual shows. Yeah. It wasn't happening. Then when the agents were able to start showing again, Steve, gloves. I threw on a mask yeah. and glove and went to the I'll closing. My agents were like, you're going in person. Some people were doing Zoom. Last thing I want, if I'm over here, and I'm not bragging, but no. if, I'm, if I'm sharing that I care about first-time buyers, that I like to teach through the process, you can't do it on a Zoom, which I'm going to closings even now. Mm -hmm. And no offense to any of like the 70, 80-year-old attorneys who are doing it on Zoom, I respect that. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to closings right now where I'm showing up as the seller's attorney, which you don't have to, and the buyer's attorney is showing up on a laptop. And I'm sitting there watching the buyer with their lawyer on a laptop, and I'm like, I, I don't experience. have the heart for this. I yeah. can't do this to the buyer. I understand they went through all the docs the night before. Yeah. I understand this. They have the flash package where the lenders send in the package two days before. But you got to go. But they're the arranging the moving truck. They're trying to get out of it's their existing so house. They're electric and Comcast yeah. and blah, 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 blah. And so they're not sitting. For the, that was the time that traditionally you sat and you were focused on your documents. What's happening right now? Let me get And relieving this. stress <clears throat> that everything's yeah. going to be okay. Yeah. Now, I was, uh, to circle back, I went out there, man. You put on the mask. Yeah. The first few had gloves. And then... I think even now, look at us, we're, we're, we're sitting, we're right. comfortable. We're yeah. six they're, they're, feet apart. They're, they're, yeah. Yeah. There comes a point where- The camera where, just makes us closer where together. people are more comfortable, so then I stopped wearing gloves, and I still go to the closings with masks, and you just get out there. But I think yeah. both of us adopted the philosophy, what do our clients want, right? I right away said, okay, if you want me to wear a hazmat suit, fine. If you right. want me to wear a hoop skirt, I'll do it. Like, <laughs> whatever it is, yeah. we'll do it, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, you know, and two, I believe that the real estate industry you know, I don't want to overstate it, but I believe we had a hand in keeping the economy going. It had you know to oh, I mean? God, it would because have been a much worse disaster. The courage that closers it had, had the courage that realtors had, the courage that attorneys had to say, hey, listen, we're not shutting down. We're going to serve Just the populace. Just let's make it work. Yeah, some of it was for selfishness of, the, hey, I want to keep my business going. But, hey, I want them to sell their home. Someone else is going to do it. The governor said we can. You know, we got more creative on remote notary. And we went it's and did it. It's such so, a huge bravo. part of our economy. Mm -hmm. If they had shut that down in addition to everything else, just think how much worse off our, yeah. our situation would be. And it's kind for you to say, you know, the real estate att attorney or the <coughs> real estate agent did it. But it's worth saying, I'm not blowing smoke because it's your podcast. Yeah, no, it's but worth, let's blow smoke. This okay, it, smoke it's worth saying <laughs> that there were staffers, employees yeah. of title companies no, who no. I presume are making less than the lawyers, yep. I presume, are making less than real estate agent commissions. And you guys stayed open and you kept going yep. and you had that escrow closer and you had the uh, young lady or young man working the deal. Yep. And they're hourly, I mean, it, it was amazing. So hats off to you yep. in that field too. Yeah, I would say every closer in the industry stepped up and said, you know, because there was a period of time where it was much less predictable than it is now. Mm -hmm. And there was a period of time where they went into the unknown. I mean, they were closing deals at McDonald's. Mm -hmm. They were driving by, watch people sign on their coffee tables, yeah. on, you know, inside the house. Handing documents yeah. through a, a window. Yeah. Through the car not, window. Not the car window yeah. all the way down like this. Yeah. With the, just a little with the time to slip through. Yeah. And, you, and you, I, I, I honor them. Yeah, I mean, the me too. fear, too, yeah. though. The fear, like, all right, sign these docs. And totally. then when it comes back, we don't know what's on a document. Yeah. So, yeah. The, the so closers. my son, we're a tough bunch. My yeah, son, right? my son, people are tough. Bunch. My son calls me like walking COVID or COVID spreader because yeah. I've been out and about every day since I got back from Nicaragua, and he's like, "You're jeopardizing our family." I go, "Well, I don't just get to sit on the couch and eat bonbons." So look at <laughs> right. you, right? You gotta, like, move. You gotta do it. The world right? still has to go, and and the virus is real, and the effect in people is real, but the need to continue and and so provide for your family and so yeah, continue. that's real too mm -hmm. um, so Teresa how did you get involved in uh, international business oh I love international so I um, would travel all the time anyway okay. I love Latin America I've been all the place I've done the international conferences so uh, I have a peer or a mentor in the field and he says, why do you not have CIPS? I go, first of all, what, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> and, he, and so it's this designation that a realtor can get 
um, through NAR called Certified International Property Specialist. And there's only about 2,000, 2 to 3,000 tops in the world that have this designation. And what we do is we collaborate with each other to help people who are doing cross-border transactions. And that absolutely is happening right now. I'm wow. a presenter for NAR. In fact, I'll be presenting <clears throat> next Monday. NAR is? National Association of Realtors. And I'm representing a commercial international broker. And we're gonna talk about transacting globally in the new norm. So that's our first presentation. We're also gonna have a round table on it. And you know, one of um, the, the developer that I work with, he has had, um, an amazing amount of deals, you know, besides me, where he basically offered to people during this pandemic, hey, I know you can't come down and see the property. He had this development already ready to go, you know, did the virtual tours, pictures. He's like, listen, put this percentage down. And he says, whenever you can fly here, or whenever it's safe, you can come. And if you're not happy, not only will I give your money back, but I'll pay for the whole trip. Whoa. So he sold half of his development, that next development, just by you know kind, kind of giving this promise, making it work. And what was helpful for him um, is he had already had this online presence anyway to attract international buyers. And so- And it was a local property and he was, uh, he was uh, petitioning uh, people that were uh, somewhere else. Yes, and I believe this property in particular was in Belize. So okay. he has a development in Panama, Belize, okay. Costa Rica, okay. Panama. I know another developer in Mexico. And so he did have that online presence. So he's gonna come on to uh, my round table. But the point is, is that we have a huge network to help facilitate our clients having a smooth um, transaction when they're buying cross borders, whether it's for business reasons, is it for investment, second home, whatever your reasons are, yeah. we have a global network. And now that's one. I'm also part of FIOPSI, which is something separate from the real estate or NAR. So <laughs> CIPS is just real estate agents. Yeah. FIOPSI, and don't ask me what that acronym is because it's actually from France and it means I'm something else. I'm picturing like uh, helmets and <laughs> FIOPSI's here. I kind of like it's a curse word. Yeah, and so this group is a, a um, an entire group of real estate professionals. Okay. So it's not just real estate agents, it's attorneys, it's accountants, it's you know, investors. It's, group, it's an international throughout right. the world. And that is a those two groups, particularly Fiatsi, is who I've been very <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll have to tell them that they you guys yeah. treat us as yeah. a word. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, we've had these networking sessions. They just right right away pandemic. They started going to Zoom sessions so that we can interact, and it's actually been a better process. We think you know because of course we would go and meet in person, but we've been able to make better connections with this online presence um, ever since the pandemic. Again, the pandemic has accelerated trends that were already in place, yeah. and now we're just getting there at a, a, at a quicker pace and ready to go. So, uh, and that speaks to uh, Vince, what you were saying about Teresa, that her client client base uh, kind of uh, lends towards positioning yourself commercially, residentially, and then internationally, which you know mm -hmm. is another step that people buying second homes mm -hmm. or doing whatever they want to do. So mm -hmm. that's great. Well, you're yes, going to see and, and continue to see a large group of empty nesters that are snowbirds, right? Mm -hmm. So from Chicago standpoint, they still want to have something here. They have grandkids, they have family, so they still want to be here but they don't wanna be here during the Hirsch months. Mm -hmm. So they could either choose Florida, Arizona, or they can go internationally. And a lot of these places have adopted facilities with medical facilities, communities, whether you want golf or hiking or whatever, they've kind of um, made similar to what you can get in the US for a fraction of the cost. Okay, that, so you guys have a radio show. And are you guys out at the same time or uh, often? Not, not always. <laughs> it's dangerous, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. And so we'll tell, what, what's, what's, what, uh, why should the public listen to that? Well, Teresa, uh, I'll let Teresa start after saying, sure. uh, Teresa introduced me to the show, okay. uh, invited me to uh, explore being a co-host. So I know of the show through Teresa. Now, Teresa would have to share how you got connected and your goals initially. Well, um, so our main host had found me on LinkedIn and he's like, you are exactly what I'm looking for. You know, Western suburbs, commercial, Part and a woman. <laughs> <laughs> it's a battle cry. <laughs> well, <laughs> and a woman in yeah. commercial real estate. Okay. So, and, you know, when I was talking about some of the obstacles in my business, you know, come back to the radio. Yeah. Um, 
about 80% of the practitioners in commercial real estate are men. And of the 20% remaining, very few of them are their own managing broker. Mm -hmm. So that is, a, again, another obstacle. So we gotta, or, an op or an opportunity. And it's always an opportunity, yeah. right? I love how you say that. you you got to leverage that even more, man. Yeah. You're like the yeah. front-running young lady or yeah. woman in the first field. lady of commercial real estate. Yeah. Sometimes a little high maintenance, but yeah. <laughs> and maybe a little yeah. outspoken. But, but I, I know you now for quite some time, and I didn't realize... The, the, those numbers and that positioning that's because it's impressive. actually it's all, probably almost flipped in residential well it's state, it's, isn't it yes i mean but it is changing right yeah. i mean the the demographic is changing and i just recently was on um com uh, the chicago association of realtors commercial forum hmm. um so the associations both uh, the, the night car main street car they have regular networking um, events that are also educational, and that's kind of how we stay on top of our game, is not only are we networking, we're always trying to learn something new. And I was very pleasantly surprised this past time how many women were on that call. So I think that, you know, we're talking about opportunities, we're gonna see more women emerge in the commercial discipline over the next decade, for that's sure. That's fantastic, that's exciting. Yeah. And as to radio, I will say, uh, unfortunately, I've heard this way too many times, I have a face for radio. Ah. <laughs> so this podcast wow. is blowing that away. Yeah, but you right. say, why I'm on radio? Because that's the insult. <laughs> yeah, okay. the problem is, is we show up to the radio and it's like Pavarazzi. They have pictures and video. It's like, yeah. I thought I was on radio. So radio is no longer just radio. No. Sure we got the Real Estate Revealed. Thank you, Steve. The yes. Real Estate Revealed .com website and, uh, and Randy Barcelo, the main show host his show uh we are co-hosts yes. i hope you don't mind me saying it that way uh uh he posts and and facebook yes and videos. he does a lot of work so, for us th so that joke only goes so far uh -huh. well uh you know so uh, so what what's the information you guys offer on there is it just kind of market data so or? i love to talk about the hot topics yeah like what is what's going on right now i mean i started off when i first i was just you know given the basics like okay wh what is commercial real estate what are the asset classes what let's talk about economic for which actually surprisingly when I gave that in January I was not far off in some sense mm -hmm. I mean of course we thought saw something was gonna you know we thought we we're gonna be more gangbusters in all asset classes but some still did like I said warehousing did great but the point is once the pandemic started it was like okay we could talk now we can talk about things that haven't been said Right? Like, how are we shifting? How are we pivoting? Business What's owners happening? and their leases. You have right. a lot of information it, about that, right? It's yeah. being concurrent <clears throat> with what the topics are. And so, like, if I talk about, and, and, and it also helps our clients, right? Well, maybe not, you're probably not advertising much for clients, but when I have client needs, so for example, I represent a film producer that I help rent his studio space short term if someone needs, you know, if you're gonna do commercial or you know whatever you're gonna do we have this now in Chicago uh, you know this new film space um, I also have you know certain client needs that there it's so specific it's nice to get the word out because mm -hmm. someone say oh I know a place again if it's someone that's I had just has a sign out front and I don't, I don't necessarily know it because I'm not gonna get in my car and drive not the, unless a client asked me to yeah. it's you know sometimes you can't find that right property so being able to not only address concurrent topics but also, when you have clients that have specific needs, it's really helpful to have that radio platform. Yeah, and what's exciting or enjoyable is we get to choose our topic. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. We have three or four other co-hosts, and, and you're limited to less than 10 or so minutes. I mean, what can you cover with question and answering mm -hmm. uh, and the interaction? But actually, I pick whatever's happening to my clients presently. I've had two-part series on unfortunately, uh, even leasing, with commercial right work on yeah. leasing and yep. the evictions and yep. the moratoriums, and mm -hmm. there's stuff happening. And, and I enjoy, uh, I won't say a, a single political comment, but I enjoy politics and I enjoy government to, uh, history. So the fact that there's those three levels of moratoriums, so I try to express that on the show, whatever is presently happening. Um, other topics were because either either A, I was receiving phone calls or my current clients were calling about it, which seeds the idea is to, well, I should talk about that if I'm yeah. getting called yeah. about it, to also what I enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, you know, helping buyers may not be the most lucrative of the sector of real estate law, but talking on the radio, helping buyers feel comfortable about the whole process, and maybe somebody on the radio is thinking about it, and then they come to me, but that's how I choose. And they can listen to it uh, 
it's a podcast. Yeah, so it's, it's a radio yeah. podcast, and that's that's yeah. what I absolutely love is yeah. that when you can put it out there forever because you know you're only on from eight to nine a.m. Totally. on a Sunday, yeah. and what are the chances you capture everyone? But then if someone is searching a topic, you know, for example, I talked about ten thirty once because right now, why did I say I was talking about ten thirty once? Because he talked about ten thirty one six months prior. He goes. Because I didn't do a very good job. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> she's revisiting because I didn't cover it. Well. <laughs> but, but, you know, the, like, for example, right now, you may not have a, a real estate portfolio that's performing as well as you'd like because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So you have options where you can say, oh, I'll do a 1031. This is an IRS code where you can do tax deferred savings. So mm -hmm. say you're in the office sector that's not performing very well and you say, you know what, I'm gonna cut my losses, but I'm gonna move that money. You can move it into like say warehousing or multifamily and not pay any taxes now. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a tax deferred program, but that's, you know, I'm bringing it up as a concurrent topic because here's an option if you have something that's not performing that you would like to see better returns on your money. Yeah, so in, if I'm a real estate agent or if I'm uh, buying or selling or if, I even, if I'm a real estate attorney, as opposed to turning on the same uh, garbage on TV, news and whatever else is out there, I can turn on your podcast, get on the treadmill and educate myself on real estate topics and just make myself smarter. And sometimes we might be inappropriate too. Oh, no. all right. <laughs> oh, wait, oh, are we talking, oh, uh, we're all well, right might now? Well, uh, that might be reason enough alone, yeah, you know, yeah, to, yeah. She's sassy right? <laughs> and saucy. <laughs> well, uh, so, okay, let's go into the future, kind of wrapping up. Uh, what is, what's the vision for your firm, uh, Teresa? Are you, are you a, a sole practitioner? Are you looking to build an agent core? Uh, yes, I'm always, always welcoming agents. Okay, so um, you have agents that are... Yeah, uh, I would definitely welcome now. residential, commercial. If they want to learn international, there's not very many international. I'm happy to bring on agents. But there's another business model that I'm working on, uh, a separate business model, where um, one of the things that's going to happen going forward is commercial space is going to be more fluid, right? Typically, we would have 10-year leases yep. or up to 75 for some of the major ones. I don't foresee in the in the in the near future that people are going to be signing long-term leases. Mm. So that is why I'm trying to build a platform to help commercial uh, real estate owners to short-term lease their space, right? Because um, businesses may only say, "I only want to come six months to a year or two years," because I don't know how this is all going to pan out. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a, there's a little bit more fear, a little bit more. I, you know, I don't want to have that kind of commitment. I don't want to put all my personal assets online for a 10 year totally. lease. So I, j and on top of it, there's going to be a need for reusing or uh, redefining space. And unfortunately, I know this is going to be shocking, but governments don't move very fast with mm -hmm. legislation. And so um, if you want something rezoned or permissible use, it just doesn't happen yeah. overnight. Yeah. So if you could just short term your space until you can redevelop that space, because it may make sense, you know, like some of the office sector, it might not make sense to be zoned as office anymore. Mm -hmm. It should be repurposed as something else. Um, and you know, I really don't believe that people are going to work from home forever. There's yeah. going to be some chunk that yep. is now enabled, but it still will diminish the number, uh, the amount of office space that we'll need for the foreseeable future. Okay, so you're provide, you're trying to get creative on a plat with a platform mm -hmm. that allows people to, and, and so compare it to what what would that be compared to, just so people that, can think of kind it of like it. an Airbnb of commercial real estate. Oh, see, I love that. That's fantastic. Very creative. Okay, and so what? When's that launching, or what's? Are you kind of working on it to hopefully have an offer? I'm, within I the next am year? currently definitely working on it and definitely helping clients do it right now. Oh, fantastic! Okay, great. That's a real value. So, Vince, what about you? Is there uh, is there other is there something that the uh, the real estate community should be looking out for uh, over the next six months? Are we going to see sure. more short sales? Or what do you think we're going to see? Sure. And sorry to sound like perhaps the eternal optimist, but I, uh, uh, HomeWise uh, is a fantastic, not HomeWiseDocs.com, not right, the right, 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 provider, right. who was awesome. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I subscribe to that. Yeah, yeah, I need their docs, okay, and quick, exactly. all the time. Um, no, HomeWise is a fantastic real estate website. They have a mortgage uh, uh, agency. Uh, HomeWise has me convinced that we are gonna be busy into the winter. This is gonna be a unique year. Um, I, I am optimistic about my deal flow or contracts to continue to come in. So that would be different, new, and unique, especially in the Chicagoland area. Mm -hmm. We shall see. Second of all, I personally don't 
believe there's going to be another lockdown. I understand as of, to- as of the time of this podcast, uh, it seems like we're ushering a, a brand new president. I think even with that change, I don't, uh, think, it's gonna uh, I don't think there's going to be any lockdowns. So what does that mean? I think that people who were waiting on the sidelines commercially, um, I think that they're so going to the get in the game on commercial. The winner comments were the residential. Mm-hmm. Uh, I now think because I don't believe there's going to be a lot, I think commercial is going to have an uptick. I just personally believe that, and I want to be positioned and ready for that. Um, I do believe that people are, whether this report about a uh, vaccine, 90% mm-hmm. effective rate is true or not this morning, mm-hmm. as of the date of this podcast, mm-hmm. um, I do believe that people are more comfortable, regardless of government lockdown. Yeah. I do believe people are more comfortable, which means there's going to be more opportunities for title mm-hmm. services, mm-hmm. for real estate agent work, and for attorneys. And then finally, I had to, remember, we talked at the beginning of this segment um, where there was that 10-week gap, I mean, from March to May, where it was slow. I do have to say, we've expanded our offering of services to another subject matter of law, including estate planning. Mm. And I know you asked about real estate, but I do think anyone listening here, whether real estate agent or real estate attorney, may be another subject matter. Uh, Robert Kiyosaki says, uh, in Rich Dad, Poor Dad, have multiple cash flow streams. Mm -hmm. So maybe just consider Uh, something out of the box and different from uh, me, just real estate, estate planning, even though real estate's my passion and bread and butter, but there's other subject matters too, just to position yourself, Steve. So you're saying that people should consider having uh, alternate uh, income streams? I do. And they're working from home, so they have a couple hours that they don't commute or whatever that they could dedicate to learning something or pursuing something. It should never just be one, because you just never know what you're going to do. And if you'll you'll permit me, my uh, family and friends have asked me, how have you been so, uh, not so busy guys, but how have you been busy in the suburbs? Who are these buyers well or who are these uh, yes who are these buyers and I'm like well they're sellers from Chicago and you got to follow the bouncing ball it's really interesting because I call it the the unexpected pipeline Hmm. then they say well wait if they're buying in the suburbs and they're leaving Chicago for whatever reasons because they want more space because of kids because of a pandemic or there's no more work because of the protests or because of work from home okay and we're much past that thing right but uh, I say low interest rates first-time buyers, and people who still want to be in the city are coming. So what I've noticed in my quote-unquote pipeline of my small business is the suburban buyers are selling from the city. The city are able to sell because you have young people, people who want to be in the city, people who know this is going to end, and even those with low interest rates, first-time buyers who could never get in the game, buying in Chicago. My friends, that real estate uh, uh, the real estate sectors or demographics have been great, mm-hmm. even in Chicago, Steve. Mm-hmm. What an optimistic uh, outlook, I think. Well, and that's based <clears throat> on what I've been noticing, not yeah. just like, oh, next year. This has been my present. Mm-hmm. Now, now, of course, things slow in the winter, but I just got finished saying, I'm not sure it's that's going to be your case. This, uh, every, the whole timeline has moved. There, you know, This is our new norm. You know, We used to say, okay, here are the months that things are going to sell. Everything's a new norm at, at the moment. Have you seen, Steve, I'll turn it back on you. Yeah. Have you seen in your He's like, title... He's ask me questions yeah, about the no, way this I, works. I might have an answer. Have you seen in your uh, <clears throat> title flow... So, so I am your uh, uh, contact or connection. Yeah. I use land trust almost exclusively. Mm-hmm. But have you, you seen a difference yeah. in the flow or any demographic that way? So here's what I would say that what I've noticed. Uh, you know, before uh, March of 2020, it seemed like the, <clears throat> excuse me, discount brokerages uh, or, you know, were... I buyers even. Yeah, right? or yeah. some of these yeah. were starting to get some, gain some ground. But I think what's happened over this period of time is that with complexity uh, comes a need for expertise. Mm-hmm. And I think what you're seeing survive is the people that are really good at what they do and it's needed more now than ever. The ones that were maybe gimmicky, part-time, one foot in, one foot out, didn't have their process in place, weren't even sure about what they were gonna say, the, you know, I think those people are either caught in the middle or have been swept out of the business. And so that, I think that that's gonna be a benefit to the consumer, uh, is that you're gonna have a lot of real, uh, of the real professionals still getting stronger 
in the in the market and you're going to have a better more educated market that's my that's what i mm -hmm. see so i fun. like that too yeah well, well for long standing <clears throat> over two decade right right yeah. in the field that if you're right uh that's only a benefit to us yeah. well you know and, and the thing is so so the the time hits and some people go down to the basement or the bunker right and then other people get on a radio show and go hey people need information mm -hmm. you know uh we need to have a voice here we need to provide some calm in the marketplace we need to say, hey, listen, there's some great opportunities. People are making money. There's things, there's hope in the commercial space. And there is all of those things. And perhaps the changes that we'll see, you know, so so now a person just doesn't sign a 10-year lease and say, hey, whatever happens, happens. I'll take the brunt of it. Now they might think about it and go, okay, listen, there are things that are not in my control, even more so now. Let me write that into the lease or let me protect myself or let me have another option where I can have more confidence. So, And I think people working from home are starting to think about, wow, this is kind of cool and I can be as productive and this is a more holistic way of living even, you know? And so you just might see that as a result of it. Um, and, you know, so I think there's a lot of th great uh, stuff and I love your guys' optimism about it and just kind of can-do spirit. So. And so how do I always close <clears throat> every radio show, do you know? What do I always say? Uh, I thought, Theopsy. I thought, <laughs> Theopsy, that's what I'm saying now. I thought you said we were gonna keep this clean too. <laughs> oh, <laughs> let's hear it. No, it is totally clean. I always say worrying is not useful, right? Mm. This too shall pass and be thankful. And then if you need anything real, say call me. <laughs> I love it. Any final words uh, from you, Vince, in that regard? Uh, well, just stay close to uh, friends and family in yeah, this yeah. holiday season. Yeah. Um, I know we're here talking about business and specifically real estate, but really the things that matter are your loved ones, your mm -hmm. friends and family. I was thinking about that on the way over. If you ask me what's the most important thing to me right now, you didn't, but that's where I'm going with my closing remark is, you know, just, just, just stay close to loved ones because uh, this time is precious and especially who else are you gonna be with uh, yeah. during rough, who's gonna stand by you during rough times? Yeah, you know, I was thinking the other day that, uh, you know, we're in this kind of presidential divide, right, mm -hmm. uh, right now. And I, 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 so I have four daughters, and I'm looking back at the years they were born, and two of them were born under a Democratic administration, and two under Republican. Oh, and, this is like a, yeah. a, an experimental. <laughs> well, you know, that. and but what I would say is, so magic moments in my life happened, and the president didn't make a difference. No, right. You know what I mean? And so, yep, I'm all for us being engaged in, in government and politics and all that, but the magic moments are still happening don't miss it, right? Yeah. Because uh, it's happening regardless of who's in charge. We know who's really in charge, right? And so, um, anyway, so hey, thanks for uh, coming on, uh, Vince for and Teresa. Us, yes. uh, the ways to contact you will be in our show notes, and we just appreciate just all you've uh, thank you. been as a resource to the industry, and so we thank honor you. Oh, and thank uh, you for this podcast. platform. It's a great yeah. podcast, too. Great, thanks. Thank you.